Hello everyone. Today I'm going to go over the assignment changing hair color using Photoshop. Just remember that um, as we continue to learn specific Photoshop tools, every single tool that you learn will help you understand Photoshop a bit more. And I have two ways for you to follow directions for this assignment, a step-by-step -step instructions and also the video that you are watching now. Don't forget that these are the only two ways that you will be able to complete this assignment. So it's important that you either watch the video and um, or uh, read the step-by-step -step instructions. When you are finished, I need you to save each of your files in a Photoshop format and then also as a PDF file, each separate individually and then submit them to Schoology. You will submit the PDF files to Schoology and because you have to do th three different examples for this assignment, I need you to have three separate files. So when I'm looking through Schoology, I will see three separate files. The first example, you must use this girl, hair one. The other one is an example of, of how it looks. And this is basically what you're going to do. You're going to change the hair color of three different uh, people. So the first one you're going to do is you're going to use the girl. And then the other two, it's up to you to go online and to search for uh, two separate examples. Try to look for images of people that have a lot of hair. Obviously no one bald or just tiny little bit of hair uh, because that's the whole point of this assignment that I'm able to see that you are able to change the color of, of someone's hair, okay? So let's get started. First thing we have to do is, oh, this, by the way, I downloaded the step-by-step -step instructions and they're here for you also to look at. And so I will open Photoshop and then I will go to first before I forget. I downloaded the assignment, right, the step-by-step -step instructions. And I also downloaded the, uh, um, the hair, hair one. How do you do that? You just remember you have to double click on the picture. Don't just download it straight from this little thumbnail. Click on it and then scroll down and where it says download image, click on that and that's gonna download your image to the desktop. Then from there, your image is downloaded to the desktop. I suggest that you download the other two that you need before you start the assignment so, you, so you're ready to go because this is a fairly easy assignment. So if you go online now and you look for the ex two other examples that you need, you'll have this girl first and then you'll have the other two. So once I've downloaded my JPEG file of hair one to my desktop, I go to file, open, because I'm opening something that already exists on my desktop. And I click on open. I look for my hair one. That's why it's important that when you're downloading, you download to the desktop, because remember, I keep saying that, otherwise you're never gonna know where these files get saved to, and then you open it. For this assignment, you don't need to worry about the size. You don't need to worry about anything. You do not need to unlock the background unless the assignment tells you to unlock a background or change the size of the canvas, then you do with that. If it doesn't give you instructions to do that, then you don't have to worry about it, okay? So we're gonna work directly from this specific uh, photograph. Remember, these are my tools. These are my layers. So if I look at the directions, it says, open the image that you will use to change the color, I already did that. Uh, take a soft edge brush, agree to the size of your image. We have not used the brush tool, so if you look in your toolbox, it basically looks like a little brush. So click on it, and remember if you don't see the brush tool, that means that there's more tools within that toolbox because there's a tiny white little arrow on the lower left hand corner, lower right hand corner, so click hard, and there's a bunch of them, it says pencil tool, mixer tool, you need the brush tool. There's two different tools here. Then there's one at the bottom that has an arrow. You do not need that one. You need the one that's the basic brush. So you have to make sure that as you look for your brush, you also make the brush the size that you need. Obviously you're not, and you already know how to do that. Anything that you're gonna use with your tools, you can change the size here on the um, lower left hand corner here. I mean lower right lower right hand corner <clears throat> click on it they want you to use the soft one that look that basically looks like the fuzzy one and then there's a hard one so this is the soft one click on that and then see what size your brush is obviously if I were to make my brush this huge 
that's too big, right? So I have to determine what size I need my brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline all her hair to begin with. So I think that this is a good size of a brush. And um, so I'm going to go from there. Then I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the next set of directions. And it says press the Q key to enter in quick mask mode. So in order for you to highlight her hair red, and it's not the color red. Entering in quick mask mode will make your brush red. So you need to click on Q. So go back to your canvas. Click on the letter Q. Just click once. And it automatically will enter your brush into quick mask mode. And you know that you did that you did it right because as you are trying to outline her hair like this with your with your mouse, it's red. It's not like a deep red, it's just kind of like a fuzzy red. If it doesn't look red, that means that you did not click on Q and that's the most important thing because it needs to be in quick mask mode. So as you are, again, uh, looking for the size of your brush, just click on Q and then start outlining. And if you see that your outline is red, then you did a good job. So I outline everything. Try not to get over her skin. If you do, you can erase it later, but it's going to take more work. So try. That's why it's important that your brush is small enough so you can outline. Okay. Then we're going to color her hair in all the way, just like this example, all the way in. So first we outline and then we color her hair. When you color her hair, you can change the size of the brush or you can leave it like that. But make sure that her entire hair is colored. This is not the color that you're going to have at the end. This is just, you're basically just coloring it in because later on you're going to change the color. So again, if I want to change the size of my brush, I can do so. That way I can just color and it'll be faster. Make sure you color everything. Don't leave these gaps because then when you change her color, you're going to see the gaps that you left. You're going to see your mistakes. And if you realize that you did it wrong, do it again. This assignment is so easy that you can do it once, twice until you get it. So I'm trying to make sure that I've gone over everything right as I'm coloring. Still under quick mask mode. And I'm trying to go back and see if I left anything. You don't need to do those hairs, you know, the ones that are popping out. That's not important. So I'm making sure that I've colored everything because I could see little spots here and there that I did not brush in with with the color and so I am good and then the next set of directions I have it if it's important that you look to see because usually these step-by-step -step instructions which by the way I did not create they were given to me when I started teaching this class and I try to change stuff because I feel like they're very wordy at times but they have pictures so it's good to, for you to look at so I have it the way it needs to be the next thing it says, it says, press again Q to leave the quick mask mode. So I'm going to click Q again, the letter Q, just once. And do you see how automatically it has like around the whole entire box of the canvas and around the girl's hair? It looks shimmery. That means that you left the quick mask mode and her hair color is back, but that's okay. Don't worry. The next step, it says, to go to... Uh, inverse go to select inverse so we go what we want to do is we want to flip in that shimmery so it just highlights her hair and not the background because if uh we just leave it like this then it's just going to color the background we just want to color her hair so we go to once we uh stop the quick mask mode and it's shimmering we go to select on the top up on the top i don't know if you guys can see it last time i saw that you guys couldn't see the things that i'm that I was selecting, but the word says Photoshop on the top, there's a feature that says select, click on that, and then click on inverse. And then automatically you will see that what it did is it inverted uh, the shimmery stuff and now it's just highlighting her hair, just her hair, okay? Got it? So then the next part that we need to do is we go to layer, new fill layer solid color and then we click on soft light so we go up to the top and we look for layer and then new fill layer and we click on solid color so again we go to the top and we look for the feature that says layer which is in photoshop 
new fill layer solid color we click on solid color we leave everything the way it is and where it says mode we click on that and then we look for soft light and then we click OK everything else stays the same except for mode soft light click OK and now you see how her hair is like kind of like white a little bit but it gives you the color picker uh, option and what you do is let's say that you want her hair to be pink you click on the pink section and then you start looking for the colors and you see how it's changing you can look for any color that you want however you want to color her hair that I'm okay with but try not to use super dark because then you can't really see or like the really light ones they don't look really good it's like in the middle tones so if you want it to be like this purple you kind of just move it and you see how it's changing the tint of the purple so let's say I want that one and then I just click OK and I'm finished if you look at your layer section here on the corner you will see that you will see the process of what you did you'll see the box that that has the purple you will also see the box that has the highlight of her hair and then you see the background so now when you are uh, trying to see if you did it correctly you know that you did it correctly because you don't see the purple outside of her hair it's within the hair and she basically looks like she actually dyed her hair this is a really um, interesting uh, technique to use because let's say that you have a personal picture and you've always wanted to see how you look with purple hair well you don't need you don't necessarily need to go dye it now you can just download a picture and then just color your hair in purple. I'm not going to show it to anyone. I'm just going to grade it. So you can use personal pictures. You can go online and look for pictures of someone else. But I need to be able to see that you are able to change the hair color of three different people. So for this for this specific assignment, you need to show me three examples. And just follow the step-by-step uh, -step instructions. It's very easy. Or follow the video that I just went over. Again, uh, in insert the picture that you want. Go to file open you don't have to do anything else and then look for a brush the brush size make sure it's small click on q that will enter your feature into quick mask mode after you do that highlight around outline the hair that you need to color and then color it in color it in with the brush and then let go click on q again and that's going to release the quick mask mode and you will know that because everything will be shimmering even the outside and then you go to the top select inverse it'll invert and you'll see the shimmer just on the hair and then it tells you to go to layer new fill layer solid color and then you go into mode soft light and that'll give you the feature to change uh, the color picker and you choose the color that you want and that's it it's very easy um, you'll have no problem doing it even if you don't watch the video if you just want to look at the directions that's fine but the video will help you and like I said these videos I do them so I want to think that I'm there with you so if you need to rewind and go back or fast forward you can do that once you finish with your first one and you know that you did it, did it right because it has the hair colored you go to file save as make sure that you save it as a photoshop format the first one and remember we know that because where you where it says save as it says dot psd that's the extension to photoshop if you lose the extension then you will not be able to open it where to the desktop it's important that you always save all your work to the desktop and then we save it right and we click ok and it'll save to the desktop if you look at my screen it's already there it's really hard for me to grade things when they're all in Photoshop so that's why I'm asking you to save it also as a PDF so it's important that you save it as a Photoshop because if something happens and, and I'm not able to open up your work I'm gonna ask you to submit it again so you need to have always a copy of your original work in your Google Drive so once you finish all three of them or you finish one you can download it to your Google Drive upload it then you go again you go click on file save as and then where desktop format but now instead of Photoshop because you already saved the Photoshop you go to J you go to PDF do we have PDF actually no we don't have PDF here so we go to JPEG I'll change the directions we go to JPEG and then we click save and that would save a copy as a JPEG which is basically just like a picture that you take in your phone the cameras are JPEG so I need when you upload to Schoology 
make sure that you upload it as a JPEG, all three of them, okay? I need to be able to see them as JPEG, and then you should have all three of them regardless on fo um, as a Photoshop format in your Google Drive just in case. I'm hoping that this very short tutorial will help you and um and if you feel if you feel like it's more comfortable for you to read the step by steps because it does have pictures then go for it and if not then watch the video until you understand what to do, okay? So I will see you next time and I look forward to grading your work. Bye everyone.